Welcome to the podcast. Young in love. So before I get into the tea of today's gist, I want to tell you guys that I look like a crocodile. In fact, I do not just look like a crocodile. I feel like a crocodile. Yes! Hey, 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 my people! How una day? How are you guys doing? So I went to this store one day and my plan was to buy a body cream. So I'm in Germany and the language is different. It's not English. So I go to this store and then I see a product, I mean, I see a brand that I'm like really familiar with. And I'm like, okay, let me buy this intense moisture cream. Because, okay, so to lay the foundation, right? I rub olive oil. That's my cream. That's my body cream. But I came here, the winter, the cold, extreme dry air, and it was like olive oil wasn't cutting it for me. So I needed to like add, you know, intense moisture and all of that. So I go to this store. I'm looking out for, you know, creams with intense moisture written on it or something like intense moisturizer, shark cream, just body cream. And then I see this very beautiful looking stuff and I see cream. Then I see hydrant and, you know, I mean, it, anybody would know that hydrant should be something like hydration, which is what I'm looking for, basically. <laughs> So I buy this product as my body cream, right? In fact, I saw hibiscus almond milk, you know, it's like a combination of hibiscus and almond milk. And then I buy it. And then I go back and I'm so happy that I've gotten intense moisture. In fact, I said rubbing it as my body cream. I have rubbed this thing for almost two weeks. Almost, I wouldn't say two weeks, but almost maybe a week and some days. And then instead of my skin looking like, you know, a baby girl's skin, fresh, hydrated, moisturized, succulent and supple, I started looking like a crocodile. <laughs> my skin was getting dry and dry and dry by each passing day. And I was like, what is happening? Kilo Shenle, what is the problem? And then I thought, okay, so maybe to fix this problem, I need to use this intense moisture cream that I bought more generously. So I would use it, I would lavish it on my body. More and more of it. In fact, I was like, you know what? I'm going to shower more times than one in a day just so i could get the opportunity to use this intense moisture cream more but my skin kept getting dry drier and dry when i say i look like a crocodile i mean literally i look like a crocodile my skin kept getting dry until it started cracking as i'm speaking i have cracks on my neck i have cracks on my face i have cracks on my elbow I have, I mean, the inner and outer elbow. I have cracks. I have cracks in, like, <laughs> in between my butt cheeks. I have cracks every damn where, guys. And I'm like, why is my skin showing the opposite result of what was intended? It's like, I, I couldn't figure it out. Or maybe it's, I just kept thinking why my skin would be drying out. And then one morning I showered and I brought out this container. I mean, the, the intense moisture cream that I bought. I looked at it and when I was about opening it, you know, to rub on my body, to use it lavishly the way that I've always done, I saw bubble <laughs> come out from it. And I'm like, why is my body cream producing bubbles? It shouldn't. And then it occurred to me, hold on. Are you sure this is actually a cream? I mean a body cream or a shower cream or like a shower gel sort of. Mind you, everything on the body of this intense product, intense moisture product is in German. <laughs> so I now take the time to translate every single word on the front of the product. Guys, I have been rubbing shower gel as body cream for almost two weeks so when i say i look like a crocodile i mean it this shower gel has been drying out my skin imagine you're trying to combat dry air and then you're now rubbing soap on your skin without knowing 
you're rubbing it as cream. So it dry. In fact, the first time I rubbed it, it, it felt some kind of way. You know, it felt really silky and all. When I rubbed it, I was like, ah, this must be a different kind of product. Like, ah, 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 this is original. You know, it was feeling. I'm like, ah, this one really moisturize my skin. Not knowing that I was drying my skin out by the day. Now I have to deal with wounds from like dry skin and cracks and everything. But it's okay guys, this is one of the things that you have to deal with when you're in an environment where you do not speak the language. Maybe on my YouTube channel, I will show you guys uh, what this product and how it confused me and all of that. I mean, the product wasn't confusing. It was just, I did not understand the language. So I assumed that the presence of cream and hydrante <laughs> together means hydrating cream you know like and so that that's totally my fault so but for the tea of today's gist i want you to stay tuned don't touch that dial so welcome to another episode of the Young in Love podcast. I have been away since November of 2021. I do not know if anyone missed me, but I know that some people missed me because I've been getting messages. Kizaya, when are you coming back? Kizaya, when are you releasing a new episode? Kizaya, we've missed you. Kizaya, this, Kizaya, that. So every single person who showed me love, mwah, I love you right back. <laughs> So I'm not coming back empty handed. Um, the first video on my YouTube channel is out, but hold on. <laughs> it is not a podcast related video yet. So um, that, that's just me trying to test my amateur skills, you know, <laughs> with this whole video thing because uh, I'm a new, I'm a baby YouTuber, you know. So um, I haven't mastered the skills yet, but I mean, you know, just captured sights and scenes from Spain. Uh, it's a very short video. And if you want to see what I look like, if you've been hearing my voice for years, since 2019 that this podcast started and you want to know what I look like, <laughs> that's a good place to start. Or you can visit my Instagram page at younginlove underscore podcast so on today's episode we're going to be discussing language as a barrier to finding love from my story you can see that <laughs> language is not just a barrier to finding love it can destroy your skin can make you look like a crocodile you know you know what i mean you know what i'm talking about <laughs> if you don't understand the language so many things are at stake including your skin health now imagine that was food. Imagine I bought a product thinking it was food. Then it ended up being something else with very grave consequences. Anyways, <laughs> it's, it's not my portion in, in, in Jesus name. Amen. Okay. So today we're going to be discussing languages as a barrier to finding love. And I'm just going to be sharing my personal experience. Since moving to Europe, you know, thank you. African beauty, a speck and more. <laughs> Small girl with big God. <laughs> I came to Europe and I came with a really, really open mind that anything could happen. You know, young girl, guys would hold up, you know, guys would want to talk and say hi and all of that. So um, I remember this one time I was in Prague and I got an invitation to hang out with my colleagues. Then we hung out. I think it was me and three other ladies. Um, we hung out at this like really nice bar in Prague. And when I finished from there, I was heading home when this guy walked up to me and was speaking Czech. I'm like, dude, I do not understand you. I mean, I gave him sign like, I just put my hands to my ear, you know, to let him know that. I mean, I do not understand what he's saying, but he was now trying to use like sign language and <laughs> dude, <laughs> I, I spoke in English, like I speak English, only English. And so then uh, I, I noticed that he was trying to like point somewhere. So then he, he, he used his hands to point to a, a, I think it was a bar, another bar or a restaurant, and then did this um, sign of drinking whatever you know when you want to drink the way you move your hand to your mouth like a folded fist to your mouth that's like trying to drink something 
So then I got the message that he was inviting me out for a drink. Kids guy, of course, like I could not ask his name. And then it was like late in the evening, night-ish kind of. And I didn't think it was the best time to bring out my phone to start doing Google Translate or speech to text or text to speech kind of translation or anything. I just wanted to go home. But I could really see that he was enthusiastic about uh, maybe me having first of Oga, you know, <laughs> not you know, Shabo, me, I know that I will still spend money because that's the orientation, right? That if you're invited out for a drink, you're paying for your drink. It's not like in, in Nigeria where if a guy takes you out, <laughs> eats all you want, and he's probably gonna like cover the bills. When you watch some of these videos, they tell you that if you ever get invited to anywhere in India abroad, <laughs> have your money, right, to pay for your stuff. And even though I got an invitation to hang out with colleagues, I paid for my own drink. So in my, somewhere at the back of my head, I was like, I'm not going to pay for another drink because I've just had one. And so I had to like tell him no, I mean, with my hands and everything. And I got onto my tram and I went home. Now, just a few days ago, again, but this time in Germany, not in Prague, I dressed up to go to church one beautiful morning. And of course, I know I'm looking good, as I always do, except for now that I'm looking like a crocodile. And then I go out and I'm waiting at the bus stop. And this guy, in fact, just me walking to the bus stop, I noticed that he, he was looking at me. Like, why is he looking at me anyways? He's seen African beauty. <laughs> and I'm at the bus stop and I notice that he's walking towards me. But I mean, you can walk anywhere you want to. This is a public space. And then he stops right in front of me. And then he speaks German. <laughs> I say English. I'm like, you speak English? I think he said something about uh, Spritz do Deutsch or something like that. And because I'm taking German classes, I kind of figured that, okay. He's asking if I speak German, if I speak Deutsch. I'm like, nein. <laughs> and then I tell him I speak English. So maybe because I said nein, or I just whatever small German it was I said, he assumed that, okay, maybe I could converse at an elementary level. And he goes on with his German. I'm like, no, 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 like, I speak English, English. And he was like, okay, um, you, you, he pointed at me, you. And then he said, beautiful. I'm like, okay, danke, thank you. He's, just, he's trying to tell me that I look beautiful. Yeah, thank you. And then I heard WhatsApp and I heard number and I heard name. I'm like, you want my WhatsApp number? He said no. I'm like, oh, okay. So like, because I could not understand. By the end of the day, after, I'm sorry, after stressing me for almost two, three minutes, it was my WhatsApp number he was asking for. <laughs> I gave him my WhatsApp number. He saw the country I was from. I'm like, oh, Nigeria. Yes, yes, Nigeria. And it's like, okay. Good thing I was nice and welcoming because at the end of the day, he helped me find my way. I got lost at some point because I was trying to locate this church that I've never been to. <laughs> I've been wondering since, and I'm just going to show only two because there have been others. I've been wondering, right, since all of these things happened, what if, is it not possible that I have met or I will meet the love of my life, but then he wouldn't know how to communicate with me in English. And then it's just going to be frustrating. Like this guy obviously likes me and okay, I, I can't say if I like him yet or not, but and I can't even speak his own language. He cannot speak mine. I mean, we can only do Google Translate for this long. You know, if you're going to go grow in, in your relationship, if you're going to get deeper, if you're going to, then you need a, a smooth channel, you know, of communication. I'm not here to give you theory on five ways to break the language barrier when you need to find love or this didn't nah. I just like give you food for thought. What is it possible to fall in love? with a person uh, and not speak their language. How, how do, how do you communicate? I, I, it, this, this, this is not just a novel question. It has happened like before, right? There's um, Chloe Smith and Daniel Marisco. Chloe, uh, you know, was 23 and Daniel was 25. They couldn't speak the same language, but guess what? They fell in love and they got married. 
<laughs> I got this information when I was searching for couples that fell in love and maybe uh, their love was successful. They got married and stuff. Having not spoken the same language the whole time. And then, then I found this couple. I found them on um, www.mirror.com co.uk and the article was published on the fourth day i mean one two three four fourth day of january 2019 and i accessed the website on um 26th of april 2022 so yeah i mean if the, this article exists then chances are that there are several others who got married and like they do not speak the same language or maybe not getting married like they're just in a really good relationship like a beautiful one and they do not speak the same language if you are listening to this episode and you know a person who is in love with someone who doesn't speak their language i'm not talking about having a second language where you know you're bilingual and you can speak either of the languages i'm talking about in a situation where you do not understand the other person's language completely you know it's it's difficult to communicate you know i would love to hear from them and hear how <laughs> they were able to fall in love you know the communication that led to that falling in love or like is it just a physical thing is it emotional and if it's emotional how do you communicate your emotions when you don't even speak the same language you know but when i think of this i feel like there might be um advantages right <laughs> there might be advantages to being in love falling in love with a person whose language you do not speak and I, I feel that absence of verbal cues may foster deeper connection on other grounds. It's just like the Netflix show called uh, Love is Blind. Love is Blind is a social experiment by Netflix to test if love is truly blind. So what they do, if you haven't watched it on Netflix, I recommend it. Love is Blind. It's a very beautiful uh, show. Um, so they are basically testing in this experiment if love is truly blind so what they do is they take away those other parameters that we are used to um, considering those par parameters that we have set in place before we can fall in love like oh she has to be beautiful he has to be tall six feet broad chest um he has to, to be from a certain place he has to be of a certain race he has to um be making this amount of money he has to be from this kind of family he, they take away those things and just leave you with the person the personality of the person in fact you do not get to see who you are talking to they want to see if you can actually fall in love establish a very deep emotional connection with a person without seeing the person so that your biases are not triggered you know oh i don't like the shape of his head i don't like the the way he she smiles i don't like the, you know they take away those things and then you're left with just the personality of the person you do not see who you speak to the only time you get to see who you have been talking to on the show it's a reality show is when there's a proposal when the guy or the lady proposes and says will you marry me or, you know i want to spend the rest of my life with you right until that happens you do not get to see this person and now when you eventually see the person the test is let us see if this emotional connection that was formed in the pods that's what it's called let us see if this emotional connection that was formed like during the show would will stand the test of time would withstand the pressures of the real world and there are actually successful marriages from that show you have lauren and cameron from season one uh they did love is blind brazil and there's a successful like marriage from that too you have barnett and his wife uh from season one as well they are still married and from the season two yes uh you have like about two couples uh, who are happily married you know so it works sometimes love can be blind you know blind to all of these biases that influence our decisions and stuff like that so maybe in the absence of verbal communication where like you, you can't really understand each other that can foster you know connections on, on a much deeper level I, I don't know this is just me thinking <laughs> can you think of any other advantages of of being with someone whose language you do not speak and who doesn't even understand your own language 
Um, I can also think of disadvantages. In fact, <laughs> the disadvantages, like first off, when a digital agent, you might want to rely on on Google Translate and you know all of that. But then we all know that Google Translate is not one hundred percent accurate. Sometimes the translation is out of context. Sometimes it is over exaggerated, or sometimes it does not like convey the real. Thing that's said and then uh, for, for instance you make a joke right in, in in your language and and um you have to explain the joke i mean we know that it is bad enough to explain a joke because there's this popular belief that when you have to explain a joke <laughs> it takes away from the humor of the joke so now you have to explain the joke Right, but in what language? I mean, if you even need to explain the joke, what language would you use to explain the joke? Because in the first place, she or he or whoever your partner is does not understand, does not understand the joke, does not understand the language of the joke, and does not understand the explanation and the language of the explanation. So it's going to be really difficult because I believe that partners who are almost falling in love or who are falling in love need those moments of you know laughter and you know, just happiness and all so if they cannot share jokes and laugh at jokes together what what, what are they doing I, and and again i think i, I made this in, in the first point emotions are lost in translation so even if you want to rely on whatever translation software that you have you know sometimes the emotions with which something is said can be lost in translation so you will not adequately convey i mean even for for partners for lovers who speak the same language there are times that emotions are lost in one or two like text or so the, the, you know the way something is said can be misinterpreted let alone partners who do not speak the same language it could be really difficult and then if you do not speak the same language how do you bond you know how do you bond with your partner all those times where you need to tell your partner some lovey-dovey things now like oh i love you oh you look good today uh how, how are you feeling can like i want you to 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 open up to me you know how you how do you really feel how did this situation make you feel you know what do you regret doing in life what do you look forward to what are your hopes what are your aspirations what language do you use to ask all of these questions you know if you you guys not speak the same language i do not know how others do it though but from the few experiences that i have had i i would say it's impossible for me to to fall in but then again it's like Kizaya you don't know this what if what if what if you know <laughs> language say with me fat put your hand on your chest or on your head no on your chest because that's where the heart is yeah on your chest and say with me repeat repeat après moi repeat after me my father my father mon père mon père <laughs> language will not be a barrier for me finding the love of my life when i meet the love of my life he will speak my language i will speak his language if we do not understand each other if we do not speak the same language you will give us the gift of tongues you will give us the spirit of languages oh yeah stop praying kabashin pray 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 in the mighty name of jesus you know i'm a woman and preacher of love and whatever it is that will stand in your way you know finding the love of your life or being found <laughs> by the love of your life it is bulldozed it is bulldozed and bulldozed amen <laughs> all right guys so yeah we've come to the end of uh today's episode and i know that there might be like several questions about where i've been um why i went on this really long hiatus this really long break and, and all of that if you recall sometime last year on my podcast i came to ask you guys to share um, my gofundme link to make donations to my gofundme link because i needed to um, get a master's yeah a lot of you were really responsive and i appreciate that thank you very much i am back to say that it was a success i mean i would not say the gofundme was such a huge success but i mean the fact that donations went in there means that you guys were sharing the link and everything but when i say it was a success i mean the the entire idea 
of going to get a master's program was a success. I am currently studying uh, for a master's degree. So thank you so much, guys, for the love, for the support, for the well wishes, for the prayers, the referrals, the recommendations, and everything. And then now, going forward, I would like you guys to subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is Young in Love uh, Podcast. Just search Young in Love Podcast. <laughs> Young in Love with Kezaya. Just, I think, okay, so you should put with Kezaya to narrow your search uh, results because there are other channels, Young in Love, Young and in Love and stuff like that. So just Young in Love with Kezaya should bring my channel to you. Um, subscribe on, uh, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm not so fluent with the Ligua Franca, uh, Franca Ligua of youtubing but i would, I would um, don't worry i would um, get better right i would get a hang of this subscribe to my youtube channel i'm going to be bringing you behind the scenes of the making of the young in love podcast and for guests who approve um, i will bring you the recordings of the podcast so you can see the guests you can see my face you can see what's actually going on the the manner in which a thing is said what we are doing when we are saying the thing you know, just all the orishi rishi, right, of podcasting. You'll be seeing it there. And then also when I go on, when I visit places or I would definitely be bringing you beautiful sights and scenes from the places that I have visited. So um, don't forget to subscribe. You don't want to be told, okay? Also, you can uh, follow this podcast on Instagram at younginlove underscore podcast. Drop a comment about this episode. Tell me if it's if you think it's possible to fall in love with someone when you guys do not speak the same language. You know, just tell let me know what you think. Uh, do you is that something you look forward to? Are you open to the possibility of that happening to you? I would like to know. So guys, thank you for listening to this episode and until when next we meet, bye and be good. Thank you for listening to this episode of Young in Love. I hope you enjoyed it. Now, if you did, you can rate us and write a review on Apple and Google Podcasts. Feel free to like our social media pages on Facebook and Instagram at youngInlove underscore podcast. Share this podcast with your family and friends. Subscribe to Young in Love podcast on Apple and Google Podcasts and for Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. If you'd like to support Young in Love podcast, you can do this on our Patreon account by visiting patreon.com slash young in love and making a small monthly donation of as little as one dollar every month or even bigger donations as you feel led to but hey if you cannot make any donations that's fine too because besides just money young in love podcast has thrived and will continue to thrive on the prayers and good wishes of good people like you until the next episode bye and be good young in love.